Mother Knows Best, Barstool's only mother podcast. Good job, Mom. Today, you look so cute. Thank you. You're wearing purple. I am wearing purple. Which happens to match. Match the book uh, that's written by the author who is our guest. Liz, Liz Goldwyn. Goldwyn. Yes. And it is a great book that everyone from their teens to their way past their 60s should read. But you can also, it's okay, so it's, um, it is for sale starting yesterday. What's the topic of the book? Sex, Health, and Consciousness. Amazing. That's the name of the book. And it's, it's about uh, just being in touch with your health, consciousness, and all of that around sex. Kim has read it, and she's, like, completely underlined, tabbed everything. And, yeah. you, and so you're so excited about this because you think everyone should read this, especially parents, so they can talk to it and normalize the conversation in the home with their children. Is that correct? Yes, and probably save people from a lot of unsafe situations or things that they're unclear about. Like, I mean, it would just make – it's just for a healthier sex life and life. But she says that you can get your energy, like your sexual energy kind of drives everything in life, which it does if you think about it, like when you meet people or when you meet your significant other or what you're attracted to or what you're not attracted to. She kind of all comes from that. Yeah, it's so important. But she does breathing and she does um, – she explains a whole lot of history about things, but she also, at the end of every chapter, has like uh, work steps to do or boundaries to set. Like it's on boundaries, it's on trauma, it's on recovery, it's on listening and talking. It's about how to approach any subject, not just sex. So she's got a whole lot of stuff in this book that you can apply to everything. That's amazing. Uh, but she also has it on, you can do it, you can listen to it on. Not, it's not called tape now. What do you call it? You can audio book. Yeah, it's an audio book, and she does the audio on it, and she's got a great voice, so it'd be good to listen to that way too. Well, everyone should be very uh -huh. excited about the interview today. Yes, and she also has um, a, a, a what do you call this? Um, it's called the sexed.com, a platform. I think she explains all that. At the okay, end she does. She but it's, it. so if you want to go check that out, you can. So today is presented by the one and the only Mamitas. Mamitas is a tequila seltzer made with real tequila that is 95 calories, less than 1.5 grams of sugar, naturally gluten-free. Uh -huh. What are the flavors, Mom? Paloma, lime, pineapple, mango, spicy margarita, and tequila sunrise. And what is your personal favorite? Paloma. Today I'm going to say Paloma and Tequila Sunrise because I had a Tequila Sunrise in Miami mm -hmm. over ice and it was really, like they're all really good, but I don't know, it just hit the spot. So oh, that's, that's good. I'm adding that to one of my lists today. Very good. Um, you can get them at Publix, Jewel Osco, Target, Walmart, GoPuff.com, or as always, we will link the store locator. Okay. That sounds good. And keep tagging us in your mamitas. We love when you guys tag us. Um, your niece was tailgating with some mamitas, and I think it's the perfect tailgate drink. It is the perfect tailgate drink. <laughs> it is the perfect tailgate drink. Okay, so what's your boomer move? I think my boomer move is I may be the only person that didn't know what love bombing was. That's definitely a boomer move. I don't think Jack knew. I didn't know. Yeah, I had no idea. I'm with you. Okay. Jack knows everything else. Which is You're also kind of well. It's also kind of <laughs> scary. It's like shit. Have I been love bombing and I didn't even know it? No, because you're not doing the off the other end of love bombing. Like you're not. Well, maybe you are. No, he would know that the males need to know about love bombing because they're typically the love bombers. He's the he would be the bomber. Right. You're <laughs> yeah. a bomber. It's it's important for Jack of all people to know what it means. And she explains it, but I but I think to explain it further is, well, I mean, it's not just people being nice and buying someone a gift. It's like coming on really hot, okay. showering somebody with gifts, compliments, like totally love bombing them. And you're like, oh my God, I've never, it's like ignoring the connection side of things. Like if you really have a connection with this person and going straight to like, I'm being spoiled. They're telling me everything I want to hear. They're giving me compliments and they're just literally bombing you like with love. And you're like, I can't even function. Or you're like, that's nice, he's great, he's the perfect one, right? Is that what they want you to do? Yes, and some people do it. Yeah. And then afterwards, like a month later, you come up for air because he's completely dropped you, and you're like, wait, I was love-bombed. Of course I was love-bombed. Like, like somebody that does it once probably does it multiple times. Like, that's probably just how you do things. I think that's what she was saying, was that they... Oh, no, in the book. that, that She was saying that on some of the, the, the sex... The, I mean, I'm not sex. The dating sites... That guys will, they'll have in-depth conversations, like, for months with people or whatever, and then they'll, what's it called, bomb them? No, no, I mean, drop them. Ghost them. Ghost them? Ghost them. Ghost them. Yeah. Ghost them. 
Um, but she was saying they'll like do. I'm at I'm at uh, I'm at Whole Foods. Do you need anything? They'll copy and paste that and send it to 20 girls. Damn, that's a love bomb. Yeah. these streets are cold. <laughs> these streets are cold. My fellow's like, getting after it. Holy <laughs> shit! I would have gone. I would have fallen for that. Oh, oh sweet! He's, <laughs> he's at Whole Foods and he wants to bring me something. No, it's okay. You That's wouldn't unreal. have made it. You wouldn't have made it in the love bomber days. <laughs> no, I probably you married the opposite of a love bomber. So it's kind of funny. So did I. <laughs> That's okay. No, it's a good thing because yeah. you can't make it very far with a love bomber. No, no, I, no. But you can with someone who's so brutally honest. <laughs> Yeah, sweet. They're sweethearts. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I think we should just get right into it because she has so much to offer. So let's get into it. Welcome to the show, Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on your book, Sex, Health, and Consciousness. Thank you. It is a great book. I've been reading it the past couple of days, and it is it's so informative. Um, speaking around and about sex and being in touch with your body in a healthy way yep. like and some of it was kind of embarrassing for me like I as I read what it was embarrassing for you um, just the subject matter I think and like even like breathing into your genitals like when I read that like at my age I go okay I hadn't thought about it that way because I'm probably from the generation that's been well actually all generations really don't have a lot of training in this exactly but, but I loved the way that you talked about how you saw women that you thought were healthy confident sexually empowered women and you wanted to be like they were mm -hmm. and then you go into this deep dive about learning about some of them and they're like not not necessarily that but your book kind of goes through how to come about that yeah and also there's never too late to breathe into your genitals <laughs> for any of us That's and it doesn't true. matter whether you have a penis or a vulva you can breathe into those genitals because the thing is most of us are totally out of touch with that part of our bodies unless we're having sex or we're at the doctor's office mm -hmm. um so and when we're at the doctor's office like if you're getting a prostate exam or if you're the gynecologist you got someone in there for like and it's cold and it's like not sexy for like two minutes just like doing a pap smear, yeah. but you're not on an on a average day like really thinking about how does my body feel, but you're thinking about other parts of your body. Right, So all it's the time. like, why are we so disconnected from this part of ourselves that actually rules all of our decision making? From like the lipstick color you chose, to the blouse you chose, to the earrings, to your haircut, to like any, like the people you, you hang out with, like where you go is kind of ruled by a pursuit of sex and love and romance but it's the one thing that like we don't want to talk about it and it embarrasses us mm -hmm. even though like subconsciously it's driving everything our, it's driving everything it's driving the world yes that's that, that that's so true but I don't know why it is so embarrassing and like even to talk about your kids I mean I remember Alex being young and I'd start a conversation and even my son they'd be like la 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 like they don't want to talk about it so it's really hard to approach it in a way that's just like the same thing about if you have cramps or if you have a stomach ache or if you are depressed or whatever it still kind of falls in that same thing a little bit totally that's why we use a lot of animations actually on our site the sex ed okay because it's like easier to talk about let's say erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. if you have um an image of a toothpaste tube that says jizz on it with like the toothpaste falling all out because like he's laughing like you just <laughs> it makes you laugh a little and it's so important that we remember that like it's funny I mean, sex is messy and awkward and human. Uh -huh. And like we have this idea that it's supposed to happen like perfectly and mysteriously like in the movies. Yeah. And that's just not realistic. Like we're setting ourselves up to feel like ashamed or feel like we're not measuring up or like comparing and despairing against like some invisible person that we think is having like the best sex of their lives mm -hmm. all the time, whose body always functions perfectly. And like against this ideal of like perfection against or like normal. Normal. Yeah, yeah, you talk about not comparing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I have to tell you this story. So we, I was at Canyon Ranch one time with one of my good friends, and we were in a, it was like a sex class talking about different things. But they put on the screen like 12 different pictures of women's vaginas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know how I missed it. Like I, I just kind of looked up for a minute, but my friend studied it, and she was, came home after we left. She goes, I was traumatized. Like no one's is the same, but you don't yeah. think about it. Like you kind of go, we're all going to be the same. Everything, like even sex, you put it in that category a little bit. Like it's just you go, here's my life, and then here's sex. But you do it all in this one big picture that is like consciousness and breathing and everything. 
Well, because our sexual energy is like our life force energy. It's our creative energy. It, it's not, I don't think of sex as like necessarily an act or something that you have to do with another person. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm channeling my sexual energy right here, right now with you. Yeah. Just like, I'm channeled my sexual energy to write that book. Um, you know, Shakespeare, actually, they said that he would not have sex when he was writing a play. Oh, because really? he was like holding on to that energy or an athlete a lot of times won't have sex before a big game because that kind of energy is powerful. So if we're just, if we can direct that to more of our life, we can actually manifest more. We can create more power. So I think we have to expand what we're thinking of mm -hmm. as sex in general. We have such a narrow perspective of what sex is. Like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And that's not like satisfying for any, any of us. No. No, and you, you do talk about that. You talk about trauma and healing, mm -hmm. which I like that chapter. I thought that was really good. Thank and then you. You, some of the things that you explained that I would think if I had heard about it, like the being bonded, bondage and things like that, I'd be like, that's so terrible. But the way that you explained it was um, very interesting. I mean, very interesting. And the way it can heal people. Yeah, I think a lot of times we are f what we're we say I don't like it because we don't understand it mm -hmm. or we're afraid of it. Um, but like that, you know, like for example, I had like a phobia about fish. Uh -huh. Like I wouldn't eat fish for years, and I was just like, it's disgusting. I can't handle it. It's uh, you know. So and then one day I like tried a little bit, and I was like, oh, this isn't so bad, and now I love it. It's just you know what I mean. It's like we have some idea in our head that something's like bad or wrong or gross yeah but it might be actually because we never tried it or even knew about knew yeah. about what it really meant or we didn't yeah or we didn't have it prepared the right way yeah <laughs> <laughs> no that's true you do talk about being in a safe like in conversation always being in a safe space mm -hmm. and to communicate what you want from a partner yeah like a lot of people don't do that no we don't do that we just think sex is supposed to like happen and yeah. that or it's, it's we're supposed to come every time and again it's not realistic so i think communicating about it is so key and i understand that that's really awkward for people very if you, awkward if you have it if you haven't been given practice to do that but i think that's why you got to practice actually with your friends and with people that like you don't there is low stakes like like give me an example what do you mean by like with your like with my group of girlfriends or with another guy or what do you mean could Just, be with your group of girlfriends okay. it could be like a really close friend if there's something that like you really need in a friendship like you just really need to feel safe to feel like someone's a good friend like hey i really like this important thing is happening in my life and i really need you to like check in on me on this day or okay. I'm feeling insecure, I really need a ride to whatever, whatever it is that you need, like naming it. We're not like given permission to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times we build up resentments because we think other people can read our minds yes. and know what we want, especially when it comes to sex and love. I call that psychic sex. Oh yeah, you did say yeah. that, that's good, Thinking I Thinking that, that you know what the yeah. other person wants, but like how if we don't talk about it? It almost feels selfish to say it. Like, it, but then you do get mad. But You're why, like, why? I don't know why it feels selfish. Because I want to know what somebody needs from me. But then when I say it, I'm like, I'm just being petty or selfish or something. Like, they should. It should. If they wanted to do it, they would. But but, but it's not. You can't know that. I don't yeah. know what you want unless you tell me. Yeah. You know, and that actually builds more intimacy. And it's also really important because we can't like put everything on a romantic partner. I think we expect a romantic partner to be like our best friend, our lover, our like boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, our life coach, our therapist, yeah. like everything. And it's, it's like that sets us up for failure because it's impossible to fulfill all those expectations. So building more intimacy mm -hmm. in like just platonic relationships, I think is so important. And you want to, like, grow those friendships. You want to feel, like, really nurtured by the people that you love, right? Yeah. You don't want to just be dialing it in. No, and that, so that's so true. You talk about filling a void, which I wanted you to talk about yeah. that. But it that kind of goes through, like, I've been married 33 years or whatever. So Amazing. those voids go in and out. And mm -hmm. then, and, and same with everything, like when the kids leave or whatever, you could be more dependent on your partner to fill those parts. But talk about how, how the, what you were saying about filling a void. Yeah, so I think that a lot of the ways that we use sex personally, like collectively as a society or personally, is like filling a void. We're using it to escape like loneliness, um, feelings of self-worth, like wanting to be validated, wanting to feel like we're good or desired, like kind of the way that we might like just mindlessly consume like reality TV or like 
and there's nothing wrong with reality TV, but, you know, or food. Mm -hmm. Like, eat, you know, if you ever, ever found yourself, like, standing up eating, like, a bag of chips, which I definitely have, yeah. like, like, a whole bag of chips, and you're, like, not, you're, like, oh, I feel kind of sick afterwards, but you're, like, anxious about something. Mm -hmm. Or, and there's, a, that's a feeling that you would rather avoid. Right. You know, whatever it is, loneliness, anxiety, depression, the feeling that you're trying to avoid, you're filling the void with whatever activity it is when you do it mindlessly. Okay. And a lot of times we use sex that way, especially like in sort of today's like transactional nature of sex. So if we're mostly using sex to fill a void, then we're not reaching even like a tenth of the pleasure potential that we could have. So I think a lot of people are just having sex because they want to feel loved. And they don't want to admit that they actually want to feel loved or they want a partner. They're like, I, especially young women, I think they're like, I think there's a difference between being like sexually liberated uh -huh. and being honest. Because it's cool if you're like, oh, I can totally have casual sex. That's fine. It's fine with me. But if you're like, everybody else is having, having casual sex. And so I think I should be having casual sex because that's what everyone else is doing. And it makes me feel like desired to have this person like me. But does it? Really? Yeah. Like, is that fulfilling for you? That's filling a void that you're just trying to to keep up or do. You did talk about that. Okay, you talked about the call her daddy, like that she, how she was in the past, mm -hmm. and about cheating or being cheated on first. Yeah. And there's a lot that you said in the book that resonated with me because it's not just like sex. It's really all about your whole body. Uh-huh, exactly. And about um, uh, communicating and, and being in touch with yourself and listening to your partner or anyone really. Yeah. You talk about all that, but at the end of each chapter, you give little homework, points. little yeah, exercises, which, which are great. But 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 you said a lot about being faithful and in a relationship too. You you bring up there's that side of it for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, I bring up that you got to talk about these things because I think we think you can cruise control sex like every other area of our life, whether it's like um, exercise or what we eat or learning a new thing, we like put discipline towards it. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, I'm going to the gym or whatever it is. But for sex is this thing that we just think it's just supposed to happen and it's supposed to be perfect and we don't want to actually like take time and discipline to improve upon it. Because sex can get better, especially in a long-term committed relationship. Mm -hmm. You can't expect that it's going to be like, at this level right. all the time. That doesn't la lust like only lasts like around one to four years. Okay. That level of drive, especially if you've been married for 33 years. Yeah. But like you got to check in with your partner and like be like, is this working for you? Are you like getting off? You also have to, I think people need to send iCal uh, reminders, uh -huh. like uh, iCal appointments <laughs> for like, it could be like a makeout date or whatever it yeah. is. But like you, you, you really actually have to work on that aspect of your life. And if it's not, if being in like a monogamous relationship is uh -huh. not working for you, I would much rather have people communicate about that than cheat. Oh yeah. But that's really hard. Or maybe one's not listening and it gets to that point, I guess a lot, maybe. I think it does. I think it does. So I think like, but I've had, I've definitely had my last boyfriend that I said, bless you. <laughs> my last boyfriend, I definitely was like, Hey, I'm, I'm like actually like total 1950s housewife secretly. Yeah. And I know um, you, you talk about that. That's what I was like. I love yeah. that. But you, um, but you've researched all of this and yeah, you have so much information. But in I here. like to feel like I'm going to be a total freak in my sixties <laughs> and I okay. want the freedom to be able to express that to yeah. my partner and be like, okay, so like I'm pretty pretty monogamous and I would like for us to be in a monogamous relationship how do you feel and like hearing them out and then be able to have the freedom to say okay if like at some point um, you're feeling attracted to someone else or I'm feeling attracted to someone else I'd like to be able to talk about it mm -hmm. you know because I think like affairs exist in secrecy so a lot I mean I have a lot of friends who have like they're in a monogamous relationship, but like they have certain hall passes for example but like as long as you communicate about that I think it's okay. I think where it gets really tricky is when people go behind each other's backs and like lie and cheat. That for me does not work. No, it takes away how you, you, you feel, you don't feel safe anymore. You don't feel safe. And the safer you feel, the more you can let go. Yeah. Sexually. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's true. Can you, so go into depth about that a little bit. Well, I was just telling Erica on the token CEO that like, you can only let your freak flag fly mm -hmm. when you feel totally nurtured and supported. So, like, for example, 
in porn, okay, uh -huh. they talk about consent and boundaries before the cam camera rolls. Like, extreme sex doesn't just happen. There's a lot of discussion that takes place beforehand so that people can feel safe mm -hmm. to, like, perform those scenes. Or in, like, the kink and fetish world, which I talk about in the book. Uh -huh. There's, again, so much discussion about what's going to take place so people feel really safe to, like, let go. And how often in life do you feel safe to let go? Unless maybe, like, you're drunk or high and, mm -hmm. like, dancing or whatever it is. There's very few. But wouldn't life be better if we felt like we could show up as, like, more authentic, vulnerable versions of ourselves? Yes. Agree with that, Dad? Yes. Yeah. Isn't it exhausting <laughs> to have to pretend to be, like, so together all the time when yeah. we actually know that each one of us in this room is going through any number of things and dealing with things and are, like, real human beings? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't the world be better if we could actually, like, reach across divides and really be more empathetic towards each other? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's hard for a lot of people, but you do get like you do give the examples in here. But that's why we got to practice with like the people that we're really close with, with our friends. And I think it's especially important that we create those spaces for men, for straight guys to do that because they don't have a lot of spaces no, where you, they feel like supported or, or nurtured or that they can be vulnerable. And I think that's really tough. And that's really really tough. I think we're doing a disservice to men by like expecting them to like you know, rise to the level of the occasion that we're at right now without giving them the tools to do so. And you talk about the Me Too, they're kind of coming against them a little bit and making it even harder, is that? I think it's harder and I think that there's like reaction that we're seeing now against, against Me Too actually, where I think there's like a lot of resentment built up and I think it's like a lot of like not listening to each, like not listening. I mean, yes, like there's rage that I have of, I've been in situations that have been really uncomfortable in my professional career and definitely growing up in Hollywood. Um, but, you know, I think that, I think what we need to do is practice more empathy and listening. Yeah, well, one of the other. tips that you said was to listen and not think about our own emotions, just to listen. Well, not think about our, our own our defensiveness. Okay. Like, if you're telling me something that I don't like. Okay. Like, let's say we're in a relationship, and let's say I'm your partner. I'm mm -hmm. your husband. And you're telling me, like, oh, honey, I know we've been together for 33 years, and but, like, I am, like, curious about opening up the, the relationship a bit. And me in my head, instead of, like, really trying to take in what you're saying, I'm immediately planning my response. So I'm actually not listening to you. I'm just thinking about, and I, I mean, I definitely do this sometimes with like my siblings uh -huh. or like my mom. <laughs> like she'll be saying something and I'll be like, Ugh. no. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I find that the more that I can just be like, really try to let go of my ego and like listen to what she's saying, then I can like find, I can be like, huh, be, like maintain curiosity. It's like, can, can I be curious about what you're saying? Uh -huh. instead of like feeling like resentful or it's an attack and so I can approach you in my response with curiosity like oh that's so interesting so I'm just curious are you like unsatisfied with me am I not pleasing you or and you could be like no 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 that's not it at all it's not about you I don't want you to feel that you're not pleasing me it's just that you know I'm craving some variety or like maybe we could spice it up a bit yeah you could good. have a different conversation Instead of getting defensive and, mm -hmm. and saying, no, I'm not going to do that, or, I'm, or thinking in my head, well, I don't want to go down that route. I would rather do this. But, but communicating about it's a lot better. So you talk about, so you talk about technology, but like from um, as being more transactional, like this generation now and technology has made sex more transactional, mm -hmm. being how? Well, it's like we can swipe on our phones, like the way that we like order something on Amazon or an Uber or Postmates or whatever. Uh -huh. Like, you know, sex and dating has become commodified too. But like how many people are having like really satisfact satisfactory times on dating apps? Like how many people are like, love it? I refuse to believe that like human beings have changed that much that we can't actually meet people in person. I agree with that. But what we're doing is like this all the time. You're like out in public and you're like this. So you're like not seeing people eye to eye. I meet people in real life all the time. And it's it's like sometimes uncomfortable when I try not to look at my phone just to like prove a point to no, myself. You said that you'll leave it at home sometimes and everyone else will be on their phone. I would be looking for my phone the whole time. 
Yeah, like, because be you, like, you feel like, you, just you feel naturally... like awkward or insecure. Like I'm the only person not on my phone. Like I'm super uncool. Uh-huh. It's like <laughs> seriously, that's what we're like wired to feel about ourselves. But it's actually kind of like disconnecting us from reality. We're already so in virtual reality that yeah. I feel like it's important to have to also take time to be like here now in the present moment connecting that's so true okay you also you talk about um people sending dick pics uh-huh. unsolicited which I think because I've heard from some young people here that they so and so sent a dick pic like I'm like you didn't even ask them that shocks me because I've never received one but um, it's never too late <laughs> 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 Should we ask the room who's had a dick pic before? No. <laughs> going to have the account blowing up this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, no. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, I don't like getting unsolicited dick pics. And I because of the sex ed, which is my company, uh-huh. we get them all the time. And it's actually an HR nightmare for me. Because I've got a company of women. And we have people like sending unsolicited dick pics to our website. It's like, hello, do you really want to embroil me in this kind of shit? I don't, if I don't want to see your, I don't want to see it unless I ask to see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I think like a note to hetero men, don't send a dick pic unless it's explicitly requested. Yep. And also it's going to go all over the internet if someone wanted to put it out there. So are well, normally you... they don't have their head in it. So this, okay. this head. <laughs> this head. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, explain what the sex ed is really quick. Sure. So the sex ed is a website and a podcast, which mm-hmm. I host, where you can find all sorts of essays on everything from anal sex 101 to orgasm breathing to prenatal yoga to erectile dysfunction, like pretty much anything having to do with sex, health, and consciousness. Um, we have live talks and events. We have a library of resources on everything from like parenting resources to like you name it, history, erotica. And we have a sexpedia, which is like a living, breathing dictionary of terms. Okay. Almost like our Wikipedia, but about sex. Oh, I didn't see that on there. That's really yeah. cool. I did I'm very learn, proud of that. <laughs> I learned a few words. I didn't know what love bombing was, but now I do. Oh, really? Like love bombing is very, very popular. So how? To, like explain well, like what it is. Well, like most romantic heroes were actually love bombers. Like oh. Edward Cullen in Twilight. Yeah. Do you know the Twilight series? I did the twi- Twilight, but yeah, I didn't think he was. Think a he total was... Christian Grey from Fifty Shades of Grey was yeah. a total love bomber. Like over the top, like I love you within a week, like over the top gifts. Um, there's a lot of like celebrities who I won't name here, but like you are all familiar with them who have like very public romances where they like, let's say, give someone an Hermes bag within like a couple weeks of dating them or like, you know, publicly declare their love. It's like love bombing. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's not realistic. No, that's not realistic. But I, I mean, I just thought it's it was like a total people fantasy. being nice. <laughs> Yeah, but then they drop you like a hot potato and you're left like shattered and being like, what was that? Where I don't even understand which way is up. So you said that about ghosting too. Like if you're mature enough, why can't you just say I'm not into you? Or yeah, Because we don't communicate. Because, we don't because communicate. we're feeling awkward about communicating. Unless someone's, I think if like someone's stalking you, that's not okay. It's appropriate. So you can just be like, you know, my new thing that I've been liking to do is just um, say LOL. And that's it. I know it's so. It's so cold. What do you mean? Say that. It's so cold when someone's just like repeatedly like trying to like a man usually like trying to you know come at me and they've behaved kind of badly. My new thing is I don't ghost. I just say LOL with no no period, no exclamation point, nothing. That's that's earth shattering. That you're done. Oh yeah, you get an LOL after you've been trying for like. (laughs) So long, I'm out. I get the message. We're good. The, well, I guess if you get the message, it's better than being ghosted. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh my gosh. No, I mean, I don't know. Usually I try to like be like honest. Yeah. I think it is better to just be like, hey, we're not a great fit, but. Yeah, but if they're not getting it, LOL does the trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I kind of like that. I do like that. Okay, I want to look at this because I want to make sure I'm it not. It is your time warning. It is. Okay, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting. Is there anything you want me to ask that I haven't asked yet? Um, and I mean, you can ask anything. No, I mean, about the, like about the book or cover or um, what you're doing? Or oh, anything? yeah. Well, I'm very proud of the book and the cover. And yeah. you can also listen to it on audio, which I'm so proud of because okay. it was my first time. This is my third book, but my first time narrating a book. Uh-huh. Um, and it was really fun to do. Uh, well, you have that voice. And I, li- you, I think you did on your Instagram. Did you do a little 
version of it, like of, of doing the book. I might have done it. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. Like, yeah. it'll be good to listen to it that way. And I love this part right here. It says, um, it says, free your mind and your ass will follow. Yes, free your mind and your <laughs> ass will follow. Yeah. <laughs> Meditate, masturbate, manifest. And I, and you, but the way that you cover everything in here is like, it's not embarrassing. It's just that subjects would be very difficult to talk to with like my daughter, but it was, should be more open. It should be more open. Yeah. But like anything, again, that we're afraid of and we don't understand, mm -hmm. we find embarrassing. Saying. I think that's it. Not understanding and how to put it in the right words. Like, yeah, but there's no such thing as right. Unless, oh, that's true. Unless there's like, there's certain hard no's when it comes to sex and mm -hmm. they all involve consent. And you do have that in here yeah, too. Yeah, which I outline. But yeah. outside of that, it's like, there's not like, I'm doing it right and you're doing it wrong. There's no like one person that we're, there's no Kobe Bryant of sex. <laughs> and even if there was, there's a million other like players yeah. who all have their own style and grace and are like, you know, assist in the right situations that you can't rule out as being incredible examples of basketball stars. Okay. That is a good point. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I think every parent should read this book. Thank yeah, but you. I think everyone should read it. But I do think a parent, this would be very um, like freeing for a parent to read and help kind of understand what they're headed into. Yeah, and to hopefully their improve their sex life, yeah. too, because I think that we can't say that after a certain age that you're not ha you're not a sexual person. Oh, not, not, yeah, not, <laughs> not to, to worry. Yeah, not to worry. <laughs> not to worry. Like, you could still be having insanely amazing sex in your 70s. Oh. So the culture tells Who you. Who just said, oh? Me. Uh, are about you that. kidding? No, I just want to hear more about that. Well, some yeah. people have sex in their 80s, yes. Alex. My dad passed at 88, and uh -huh. he was, like, a total Lothario. Like, he had, like, um, the third wife, the girlfriend. Like, you know, he was definitely having some good times <laughs> yeah there's yes you can i think that it's like insane that we just think like after a certain age you just stop having sex and yeah. you stop having sexual thoughts and no that's like insane actually in women as they age their libido increases yes i've read that mm -hmm. and when women go through things like menopause for example their their libido tends to increase whereas men as they age their libido tends to decrease Except for your dad. <laughs> well, except for my dad. But I think Viagra was like a big assist there. But that's why you have also like it's like a lot of older women like want to like hook up with a younger man. Oh, yeah. After, at a certain age. It's like Here for be it. because. Yeah. <laughs> I think that you think that when you look at your in-laws or your parents that they're not having sex anymore. Why do you think that? Because it, it's embarrassing to you or what? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's. But like, OK, if you had asked me at like 16 uh -huh. what I would be I would be like oh my god does that mean my life is over like that I have nothing to look forward to because yeah. again as I told you I plan on being like completely wild like starting in my mid 60s okay like you know I I might not be a totally monogamous vanilla 1950s housewife in my 60s I might be into some other some other kinky shit yeah. who knows yeah but like that's sad to me that you think that like your life is, your sex life is going to end at a certain point yeah, because it actually it well, only you, gets better yes okay thank you yeah so do, I'm, do you were you do you think that you're thinking that because it is your in-laws like if you looked at anyone else that wasn't your in-laws you wouldn't think that well, i think it's i think sometimes you can tell i guess like you look at two people and you're just like you guys seem bored and annoyed of each other and you're just kind of like or i guess there are couples like i look at you and dad and they still hold hands and flirt and i'm like okay so i guess it de i guess it depends but you don't ever see that my age i don't have any friends that are sick of their husbands yet so i guess i associate it differently maybe they say they're not sick of their husbands <laughs> right. you did say <laughs> you did say that, it, that what, i can't remember what it was about but you were like N everyone's not telling the truth or everyone's oh, lying. everybody lies yeah about everybody lies about how much sex they're having oh that's what it was how much yeah, sex they're having especially i find in like like straight married couples uh -huh. they will like constantly ask other people questions about their sex lives because they're just not having it at home well i wondered why and they're did, not having talking like, about that i was like why i wonder why they ask <laughs> because they're not, not they're like trying to live vicariously oh you wow know, i've recently found out that like a lot of um straight married men are keeping their raya and dating profiles active mm -hmm. and claiming that they just can't delete it <laughs> Whereas, nice. like, I know a lot of women that are easily able to delete those same <laughs> profiles. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, 
hmm, <laughs> trying to have your cake and eat it too, yeah. huh, buddy? Uh, while meanwhile, like they're posting like Instagram happy photos of like they're perfect because it's all a lie. Everything you see on social media is a lie. Yeah, everybody's doing this like performative, you know, idealization of like their sex life, their love life. You know, behind no one knows what's in another person's relationship behind closed doors. And again, like if you say people aren't bored of their sex, like if they're not talking about it, or when you see, you said you saw older people and you think they're bored because they probably never talked about it. Oh, oh, yep, that's probably more true. Yeah, never did. Yeah, because that's the cool thing about sex mm -hmm. is that it's not like skydiving or. Um, playing a sport like you actually it doesn't it's not really age dependent you can like totally improve again if we think of sex beyond just like you know missionary penetration if we expand our ideas about what sex is mm -hmm. there's so many different ways that you can explore it as you get older yeah and try different things we just don't see it represented in media no well because it would kind of be along the lines of well I don't know why well, there is a genre called senior sex in porn oh really mm -hmm. yep <laughs> Google it. Okay, I'm going to Google it. But the thing is, like, again, I saw you making a face over there. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that all of us yep. are eventually going to be old. Yeah. And, and wrinkled. And wrinkled. <laughs> and have our body parts change. And if we're like, ew, gross, or fear it, uh -huh. then we're not going to have a good experience of that time in our lives. Where, like, you'll actually it's be, so like, true. so much more confident and be able to say what you want. And you'll probably be, like, making more money. Like, your life overall will probably be, like, more set up for you to succeed. So if you're looking at that point oh, in your wow. life and being like, oh, gross, I don't want to be there, then, like, yeah. you're not going to enjoy your life. That's exciting. No, that's, that is very true. I get comments sometimes, like, I'll be like, oh, my God, is that the oldest thing on the Internet? You know, like, on TikTok or whatever. You're like, okay, thanks a lot, asshole. Yeah, <laughs> fuck the haters. Yeah. <laughs> is what I say. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, also, Sorry, I, didn't, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on you. You are. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> Whenever I do, they just like like put it on instant reel. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, it, well, there's no such thing as bad press. That's true. Yeah. That's what they keep telling me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Liz, thank you so much for thank being you. on. I enjoyed this so much, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell everyone about your book. Yeah, you are. Yes. And I'm gonna and talk to your bridge club. I'm gonna yes. Yeah. I'm gonna um. We will do a little talk about it. <laughs> you might be you might be embarrassed of this shit they say. <laughs> I don't think so. It's pretty hard to embarrass me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>